Okay, let, let me start by explaining. I'm sorry, I put, but it's only one, I, I promise you, it's only one that I put there. So, so let me just start by a quick, uh, quick re recapitulation of the example uh, that we did yesterday, because it, can, uh, it helps me to motivate what we want to do today. So, okay, this, this is the example that we had yesterday. P is a prime larger than 3. And then we were looking at this, Gawa, this P cyclic Gawa cover in characteristic zero, given by this uh, Kumar equation here. So, so this is what it looked like. And what we did yesterday is we computed the, the G-stable reduction. Yeah? So, so we, this G-stable model of Y, this was the unique minimal model such that on the special fiber Y bar, the uh, singularities are o o ordinary double points and the ramification points of this cover here, they specialize uh, to, to distinct smooth points. And also the, the action of G should extend. So, so the picture that I've drawn here is the same that I had yesterday, which depicts the reduction of this cover. Okay. And so now we call what we computed also over this was the component where we have the where this, over this component here we had uh, uh, exactly the just a reduction of the original equation that we started with, as you can see. And so this was a purely inseparable map of the group P, and we had shown that uh, you had to blow up this, this, this surface with like these equations at one point, and then you found uh, a separable equation, which is given by some Martin Schreier equation, which is just wildly ramified over this point. And so now the point is, so so that is the special fiber of some of some arithmetic surface, but these these projected line we could also contract them. So here y, curly y and curly x, these are the G stable models. And what I may do is I may just contract these two components of the special fiber, and since they have genus zero, this doesn't uh, this leads doesn't lead to singularities. And of course, on the special fiber, we then only have these two smooth curves left over as uh, uh, some special fiber of this y prime and x prime. And okay, so the fact that such a, a contraction map exists, it means that the cover we started with from characteristic zero, it has a good reduction. It means there exists some smooth model, which is this guy. Or what we could what also amounts to the same, this cover here, this separable cover in characteristic P, which corresponds to what happens over this component, which, which is the special fiber of this guy, it lifts to characteristic zero. It's also the same thing. Because there exists such a smooth curve here. And and so this is really the thing that we would like to do. So now the goal of this talk is the following. In this, in this ex particular example, so we have constructed here an example of a cover of curves which lifts to characteristic zero. Well, okay, yeah, here, and here's the lift. Yeah? So here we can really do it by equation, but of course we, we proved it by a very uh, a roundabout way, sort of we, we said, okay, we started from something in characteristic zero and we just reduced and saw what we got in some sense. Yeah? So now what we want to, to do, we have already seen this in the previous talks to, to study this question of which covers in positive characteristic really come from such covers in characteristic zero. This picture here is much more helpful than just having the, the separable cover because this tells you exactly how you have to position the ramification points of your cover in characteristic zero so that if you reduce that, it works out. And it turns out that, that one can describe this picture here. This is some combinatorial data in characteristic P, which you can attach to your Arkin Schreier cover or any G Galwa cover in, in positive characteristic, which is a necessary condition for coming from characteristic zero in, in this construction that we have. And in this case that we're looking at, the case that P strictly divides the order of the Galwa group, this this um, the, this condition that I haven't written it, but this construction that the existence of all this combinatorial data in characteristic P. Uh, this is even uh, sufficient for lifting the cover to characteristic zero. So in this particular case, yeah, if we had just, we didn't know that this this was the thing that we wanted to look at. If we had just given this cover here, this Arkin Trier cover, in positive characteristic, to, uh, to 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 show that it really uh, lifts to characteristic zero, we don't have to actually find such an equation which in reduction gives this guy, but it would suffice to construct this picture here. 
So that and that's and then the goal now of this talk to, to really define you what, what I mean by this picture here, this combinatorial data that you have to do in terms of what do I might mean with it? I'm just going to define it afterwards. And then also how can you now, if you have given a cover, how can you construct these things, this, this combinatorial data? And so these are the deformation data, these combinatorial data, the so-called deformation data uh, that we want to define. And deformation data for that sense, because we need them in order to deform the cover to characteristic zero. Okay. So let's get started. And so that's the goal. So okay, so now the situation is as follows. For simplicity, I, I start by assuming that my group is Z mod PZ. Actually, the case, the, the, the way I construct things today, this works for the case that P strictly divides the order of the, of the group. So for example, this group we will dis discuss afterwards, we had this extension of the cyclic group of order prime to P by FP. This is still covered by this kind of construction, but um, for the moment, I just restrict to the somewhat easier case for simplicity. And so suppose, We have such a G-stable model of some Galois covering of six zero or any any mixed characteristic G-stable satisfying this condition that we have before. Okay, and now suppose that Y zero bar is an irreducible component of the special fiber of Y. So just like here, we should think of this component in the example over there. So it's especially choose the same so the notation and it should be in such a way that the inertia group of the component is non-trivial what this means is just that if you look at this uh, the map well this let's do it in the example but the general case is the same if you look at the, the special fiber of, of my g stable map and I restrict it to, to my irreducible component y zero bar then this map should be inseparable yeah, because the degree of inseparability is exactly the, the order of this inertia group here. Okay. Now what we can do is we can consider the function fields here of the generic fibers. And, and, and so this, this uh, y0 bar, maybe the image x0 bar, there are divisors on these surfaces here. So we can look at the generic point of this divisor and then just complete uh, the function field of, of this curve of, of x. It should be uh, with respect to the valuation corresponding to this. Uh, y0 bar or x0 bar, which is the image in this x of the component. And so that, that, that yields, maybe I write bar just to uh, head to, to indicate that we are looking at complete fields. So we get such an extension of, uh, of complete local fields. Okay, and, and, uh, uh, and so the residue field field extension is inseparable. Okay, this comes from this assumption that the, the, the thing I look at. So this is, we saw this already uh, before lunch uh, in, in Saito's talk. Right? This, is, this was, I mean, it was not exactly the same situation, but this was the same, similar kind of problem. In, in uh, yesterday, we saw a little bit how we could do in the classical case where we have um, uh, extension of local fields where the which have perfect residue fields and the extension is separable where we can do a ramification theory but now here we, we need a generalization we can here we, in this case we have a general we should look at the uh, generalization because here we have uh, an ex, uh, residue field extension which is inseparable okay so 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 what can what can we do well one thing we can still say yeah so these fields, they are still fields of characteristic zero. The residue fields are characteristic P, but the field itself is still characteristic zero. And, uh, okay, we assumed that we are looking at degree P extensions here. So this is an extension of degree P. And so we can give it by Kumar theory. The 
there exists some polynomial, as in some LNMG, the VK hat, such that this extension of the VP is given by Kuma zero. As in such a Kuma equation. Okay, so that's that's very nice. And and now what we want to do, what can we say about the, the extension of the residue fields? So you should really think here of this, maybe just go back a little bit to this example. You should really think that we are we have a somewhat more generalization of this case here, right? where, where this is basically what, what happens. We come back to this example in a minute. Okay, so this we want to describe this more, more generally. And so we actually, in the case that we have a characteristic uh, degree P here, characteristic P, we can classify, there's a classification of these kind of extensions. And there are two cases. First case is the so-called multiplicative case. And this happens if the reduction modulo P of this polynomial, this, this Kumar, this, this polynomial G, which we had in the Kumar equation, this is not a, a piece power modulo P. And so of course in characteristic zero, the G itself, it should not be a piece power. And this would not be an irreducible equation, but it, of course it may happen that if you reduce something, it's not a piece power modulo p, it becomes a piece power. First case is this case where it doesn't happen, and in this case, of course, well, we can still, okay, I now I don't write the heads anymore because I, because there's too, too many things that are going on. So, so of course, then in this case, the residue field extension is still given by the, same, the reduction of the equation because this equation here it's still irreducible, so it's uh, still the right. It still defines a, a field of the right degree, so this is going to be our residue field extension. And so we associate with this extension L bar over K bar. We associate the following uh, invariance. Two invariance. One is for the depth delta. In this case, in this case, it's just p over p minus one. I, I don't want to go into the significance and the meaning, the, inter the geometric interpretation of this depth here. You will see it in the, in, in, uh, in the next talk, Stefan's talk tomorrow. I, I just uh, mention it here for completeness. So, and the second invariant that we associate is the so-called differential Swan conductor. This is the, the differential form uh, defined in this way, uh, g g bar over the, the logarithmic differential of this thing here. So it's a differential form on x, x uh, zero bar, neuromorphic differential form. And so, well, okay, this looks somehow sounds familiar. Uh, we had lots of Swan conductors also inside our stock. So let me quickly integrate. I am not going to uh, tell you, explain you any details, but I at least want to say what the connection is. So, so I mean, I, I'm giving here a very ad hoc definition to this very concrete case where we can really describe things by Kuma theory of, of a much more uh, general theory, which is Richard Cato, and uh, which is basically defining Swan analog, analogous things of the Swan characters in the case of uh, these local fields with inseparable uh, residue field extension. So there is a theory of, of Swan conductors which is similar to what we saw in, in, in Saito's talk this morning. And and okay, so instead of just associating uh, numbers, in some sense you get some different objects and these different objects are uh, these differential forms together with this, this, this residue field. So this is really an analogous theory. To, in, in the, and if you look in the notes where we have written the definitions, in this case, but with really the abstract definition, you will see that it's really a similar kind of definition yeah, to the classical case. You really try to extend all the objects, the i, g, and so on, like we saw this morning, in this context. And then if you do this in this concrete case, what comes out is a differential form. So I'm a bit cheating here because you will say we before we had Swan characters, and here you don't see any characters, but actually you get such uh, information, delta and omega, for, for, for every non-trivial character of our group. But of course, since our Galois group is Z-mod-PZ, uh, well, the, the character theory is rather uh, easy, and 
all the non-trivial characters that is powers of each other. And if you do that in the theory, delta is just the same for every character, so we don't have to say it. And the differential form, if I change the character, it just changes by some non-zero constant here in front. And since afterwards we will mainly be interested in the zero orders of zeros and fours, this doesn't matter any at all. So we just choose any old character and then took the this one character of any of them, no matter. So there's some choice of p through infinity, something like that. Who cares? So this is really this is really very similar to what we saw this morning in a in a different situation, but 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 you should think of it as something really simil similar. Okay, so let's um, let's look at our, our I, I put this this up back in a minute, but I just want to have an, a quick look at our example. So 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 here we see we are actually in this case because our polynomial g is uh, is not a piece power. We're not in characteristic three, so this is not a piece power, and therefore we're in this multiplicative case, and we have there this differential form. I call it omega naught. It's just a logarithmic differential of the reduction of this polynomial g. It's not too hard to compute. And uh, so what you see, uh, if you compare it to this picture, this is the differential form, which lives here on this component x0 bar. And it has um, a, a double zero here in this point, which corresponds to the fact that uh, here, above here, we have the separable component, which is uh, a conductor of 2 plus 1 is 3. This is the g here, which is the compatibility. And then you see this has four simple poles in, in these points here which are the specialization of the zeros of this polynomial here, so the multiplication points, and infinity. So it has exactly simple poles at the at each specialization of these ramification points. And so this have we also seen a little bit in the end of Chevron's first talk. So this is this is the kind of thing that, that tells us exactly how the ramification points look like. So this is in this kind this this interpretation. Huh? And so the fact that the poles and the zeros they correspond to the specialization of the ramification points and the genus of this positive genus component that it represents. Um, that these are compatibilities conditions that we have on, on this on this G here. So this is, will be important later on. Then the second case, this is the additive, the so-called additive case. There is a reason for this name, but I'm not going to explain it. And this, of course, well, it's a different case. This is the other case where the reduction modulo p of this polynomial g is now a piece power. And okay, so in this case, now we see that this, um, if we reduce our Kummer equation modulo p, then it's of course uh, this is a piece power, so this is reducible. And therefore, this y bar is different from. Uh, what we had in, 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 in the multiplicative case, now this y doesn't uh, 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 generate our residue field extension anymore. So we need to write, so basically what we do, we have to look at our Kummer equation, not just modulo p, but we have to look at the next term. Yeah, in the, in, if, you, if you think the two terms with next second highest valuation, and they also play a role in the case. So what we do, we, we write, Our Kummer polynomial g of x now as z to the power p times 1 plus u to the power p u. Yeah, well, okay, so modulo this mu is some element of our maximal ideal. Uh, it doesn't have to be a piece power, then we just uh, extend our field constants a little bit, we're allowed to do. And, and z and u, there are just some elements. Uh, some integral elements of the number. So, so, so you can definitely write your g in this form. You'll see, see an example in a minute. And then we define y. We just write z to be, uh, y to be a coordinate, y to be z plus 1, z times 1 plus mu times w. So it's the same mu. And this w is just at the same z, but the w is a new uh, variable. 
And if we plug this into our equation, our Kummer equation, y to the power of p is g, and reduce modulo p. Okay, I forgot to write something. Then we find a new uh, Kummer equation in reduction. And now, this is a condition. So it's a condition on you. You have to do this in such a way. I'm sorry, I forgot to write it. I just write it here. This is really not, it doesn't follow. It's a condition on this u. You have to write, do this rewriting in such a way that this u is not a peak power. If this u is a peak power, then we could put this part in the z again, and we can keep on continuum until this u is not a peak power. So we may assume. Oh. Thank you. So we may assume that our u is not a peak power. And then this is then, uh, so this W is now an extension of our residue field extension. And we can associate the, to the depth. Delta is now P over P minus 1. is the same as what we had before. But we have to subtract the valuation of mu. And the differential is 1. It's now uh, the, uh, the D of this U. So you may wonder why you have this different thing, why we don't take the logarithmic differential form. But the reason seems a little bit in the first talk, I, you, you, of course, because it should be this differential in form should be in some sense really determine the cover. So, so at least all the things that we want to do. So it should not be dependent so much if we change this Kuma polynomial G by some piece power, then it shouldn't affect this thing here. So now we're not looking at our original G anymore, but we have rewritten our G in this way. And now you just have to see if you change this P by uh, G by a piece power, what how does your U change? And of course it's different than in the previous case. And if you see this is just the right thing to say. If you just work that out, you can see what I mean. So I'm not going to say much on the example that we have here, but I'm just quickly recalling it. This was the other example that we discussed yesterday. This uh, curve of genus 2. And um, and so this was the degree 2, this was this degree 2 map by just modding out the hyperelliptic evolution, evolution. And then we had seen that I, I'm just writing now the curve x. This G-stable model, this G-stable reduction of this curve, uh, it looked like this. So that was much more complicated. I, I'm not going to completely repeat all the details. And then what we what we did, we looked a little bit at this component now here. And what you can compute here, so on this component x2 bar. There we had th that corresponded to this change of coordinates, to this blow up of the projective line. And the thing you have to do, uh, so, so if you choose this, make this coordinate change in y, then you see that you can divide the whole equation by 4. And in reduction, this, uh, if you then do the computation, you see that uh, the, the if you make this coordinate substitution in here, divide everything by 4, reduce modulo 2, this is the equation that you get. And now we see, aha, uh -huh, okay, this is, a, this is the piece power here. So we are here in the additive case. And, and I'm not going to compute. Now you can just do and do this, this rewriting that I did. And it's, I did it with the, with the product group yesterday. but. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it takes some time. I'm, I really don't want to do it here, but it's, it's in principle elementary, yeah? really putting in and working out. And then you can compute this differential form, and what you find is that it exactly has uh, double zeros in these points and double poles now in these points. It should be double because it just counts the number of branch points that lie, that lie there in that direction. So this is how, how this compatibility now works out in this case. So, so it tells you, again, just as in the other case, if you do this computation, compute your omega is d u, then you really can tell 
for on this component exactly what this picture should look like. And that was basically how we argued also yesterday in deciding that in this case we had these two components but positive genes. So, so you can do this also with this differential form, it's the same thing. So, so, so this, this is the classification. These are the only two possibilities that, that are possible for such uh, extension of uh, local fields of degree P with uh, inseparable residue field extension. And so now I'm going to give you some other. Uh, now I have to tell you what this, this combinatorial data is. Right? This, so we have these differential forms, these are just the deformation data, this is the information that we need afterwards to lift everything. And then the whole, the whole package in some sense, this is called a Hurwitz tree. So let me go back to my first example. Yeah. The Hurwitz tree is going to be this whole package here, every, all the stuff that we have defined. So what is this going to be? We have a tree. Everything, it's, it's, a, it's a combinatorial object and characteristic P. So we have a tree of projected lines. It's this projected line, this projected line. So it's, it's just X bar. If, if we came from characteristic zero, it would be X bar. Then we have marked points. And these, these, things, these are the specialization of the ramification points. And the same as in the picture over there. And then we have, on each component, we need to know, well, what is the ramification? So here it is, uh, it is separable, so the big, uh, but, but the Galois group is, is over P, so the big composition group is over P, and we have here this one trivial here, both the decomposition and the inertia group of order P. And then we need to know the ramification of the, the singular points and the marked points. For example, we need to know that this point is one of the branch and so on. And then for the inseparable components, where the inertia group is trivial, we need to have such a such a deformation data, this de delta and this omega. Yeah. And then they have to set, satisfy lots of conditions, but the, the, the most important ones I have told you. So the, the zeros would, should, uh, should indicate where my components of positive genius are, the poles should indicate where my points are, and so on. So this is all this compatibility conditions, this whole package, this is called the Hurwitz tree. And this is now our combinatorial data. If I really want to give the formal definition, I'm afraid it, uh, it, it takes several pages, so I'm not going to do it. It's, it, it, looks, it looks a bit overwhelming, but, every, but, but we'll do some a concrete case now in the second half of the talk, where you get some feel. It is, of course, combinatorial to figure this out, but there is really you can, you can, in practice, with concrete groups, there's a way of doing it. Yeah? So you need to have some, it's, 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 it's possible, it's, it's not so bad. It's, in concrete cases, there's really in, interesting thing you can do. Yeah? So, but, yeah, so here maybe I write not, again this differential form. Yeah? So, so this and here we have this, this, here we need to know the, 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 the ramification, this H, which describes the ramification here. But this whole package here, this is basically my whole history. And I didn't write the decomposition groups, but I told you. So, so this thing is, is this, this is the example to this uh, whole history here. Okay. So now what's the problem? Yeah? The problem is now as follows. We need to construct these differential forms. So this is the next scene. This, this, uh, this differential forms, we call them deformation data. So we need to construct them. So 
Okay, so we have just two cases. Let me just write them. We have the multiplicative case. In this case, this differential form is always a, logarith a logarithmic differential. The derivative, so we, this is a logarithmic differential form. And in the additive case, this was just like the form for u, the so-called exact differential form. So and now the problem is, given some cover, separable Galois cover, Galois covering is a positive characteristic, we have to come up with such this whole tree, like in the example that we had before, to, we have to think of this two-eight example that can also be pretty complicated. We have to come up with a tree with all these differential forms which match in the right way. And if we have it, and, and we are, at least in the case that P strictly divides zero over two, then we can afterwards show that we can do this with the whole thing. So how do we do this? Well, actually, it turns out this multiplicative case, it's in some sense more complicated than this um, additive case. And, and the problem is, I mean, you, you didn't see this really from, from my definition, but the problem is, we, if, if, if with the decomposition group is not just Z modulo PZ, but for example, such an extension of Z mod MZ by Z mod PZ, then also the differential form in some sense needs to act correctly. The, the, this, this, uh, sorry, I tried the sentence again, it was not correct. The, the order group of order prime to P has to act in the right way on the differential form. And this is then, this may be really complicated to really find the right thing that does it. So, so, in some sense, the, you, you should try to make the tree maybe a little bit longer at some sense, and then you can maybe, it's maybe easier because, the, because you, you, get, you get rid of this Gawa action of it. Well, in this talk, we, we mainly concentrate on the multiplicative case. The additive case is mostly a bit easier. I say something about this at the end if I have time. So in the multiplicative case, the following easy lemma, and this is in the case that we really have no, so this is in the case where the Galois group is Z mod PZ, where there's no prime to P action, and it's a bit easier. Then if we have some H, which is prime to P, then there exists such a logarithmic differential form. This is the prime to PZ, omega on one with H plus one simple poles and a single zero and of course one uh, follows then immediately from the degree that this single zero ha should have the order h minus one okay so now i just I, I this is really not so bad i just write it down as proof this may be good that this one Since h is um, prime to p, I have in my field an a, a primitive h root of unity, and now I just define points. H, I, I mean h, plus, I need h plus one poles. Huh? So here I already have h of the h plus one poles, which are just the, the the roots of the h root of unity, and then I add another one, namely zero, and then I just define as a function. So, well, you, you'll see exactly why I do it like this. Huh? So let me just uh, let me just uh, do the computation and explain why it works. So I, said, I put a pole of order h in zero, a function with a pole of order h in zero, and a simple zeros in the other points. And then, of course, if I take the logarithmic differential the derivative you know, by the by the rules for computing logarithmic de derivatives. I get uh, I get simple poles in all these points, and okay. So the only thing now I have to, to see is that it really has a unique zero at infinity. So for this, well, we, we rewrite this thing, which is still elementary to do. So 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 you rewrite it. You 
this way and you see uh -huh, this h is non-zero it's it really has uh, only a zero at infinity and so therefore the order it has single zero therefore it has the right order yeah? so so this is the kind of thing this is like very easy to do if you know so 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 this is this is basically you say well you you know here what the well, from from the, the the fact that it should have the differential form, the logarithmic differential of your function g should have simple poles here in these points. You know that you have such a partial fraction decomposition of this dg over g like this, and then you still can can choose these residues here, and now you just have to choose the residues here correctly, so that this differential form ends up with a single uh, with a single zero. And in this case, okay, you're lucky and it's easy to you can you can easily do it. But okay. It's it's easy if you if you have some feeling for this and we have a a, very, a good co-author who immediately sees these things here and puts it in this but okay but anyway you see you can do it but now this would be much more complicated if you needed to have some prescribed m action here right, at this point it would be more complicated but I'm not going to go into this so now how can we apply this we want to show that uh, we want to consider liftability for this group here. Yeah. Let me just uh, recall the, the setup that we had already in the first talk. So there we considered uh, this. Um, Extensions of a cyclic group of order prime to p by a uh, group of order p, and there uh, we had seen at that. Uh, well, I, this is the part that I didn't really explain, but uh, Stefan stated that uh, this a necessary condition for liftability is that this character defined by the action of e mod m z on f p should be injected. So, so let's just assume that in particular, it follows that m Uh, m divides p minus one, and then we had seen also that the Bertin obstruction vanishes if and only if h is congruent to minus one modulo m. So let's just assume this. Okay, and now now we, we as a first step towards showing that all the covers that satisfy this condition. Here, lift to characteristic zero, we have to construct our Huitz tree. And I'm, I'm actually, you have to distinguish two, uh, three different cases. I don't think it's complete. I've completely written all the details in the, in the notes. I have to uh, make a new version. But I, I'm, I'm just showing you the, the one case, which is maybe not the easiest case, but at least a typical case. So, okay, so I need one more integer. So n is just now defined as p minus one over m, and I consider here the case. And I write h plus one, so this is divisible by m. I can write it as alpha plus p beta, and I'm now considering the case that this alpha is between p and uh, between one plus n and p. I, I explain. Uh, don't worry about this for a moment. I'll explain it at the end of the talk. So okay, so so um, there there are two other cases. Well, of course, there's one condition. Uh, there's another case where there's a possibility for for another possibility for this alpha. But there's also, uh, I mean, you really need to distinguish the case where this beta is different from and this beta. So, so you, you really need to distinguish between this h being less than p or larger than p. So in, in, in the case that h is less than p, it looks a bit different. Uh, you really have to look at it. I'm not going to look at it. We need more time. Okay, so we look at this case. Okay, so, so what's the setup? Let's recall. So this is our separable cover, which is given in 
characteristically. Fractal is in these two steps. And this uh, we, we had already seen in the first talk that is no restriction to suppose that these two guys are P1s and this one is only branched at infinity. So this is just arc and triarc cover the multiple. Never mind. So now we want to construct, I, I start here with the picture here on the, the Z level. I want to construct such a tree. So here I have my component over which the decomposition group is trivial. And here I have the point infinity. And so now outside here, infinity, I figure will stop all these differential points and so on. Okay, now the way it's going to look like, let me first draw the picture and then explain it. So, so we're going to construct we construct a tree of projective lines, which is an, the first ingredient that we need. This is it. So here I have my projective line over which I have my separable. Here I have such a, and then here there is such a cone. So on these tails, there I have several points, and well, the 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 way it works out. I mean, we first want to do the m cyclic cover still, so we. This M is uh, we ignore it for the moment. So we have one component where we have alpha points, and then we have beta components where we have P points. This is the stuff. Okay. So if I just go to this X, well, it's just looks exactly the same. Yeah. So the picture is the same, but I mean these points here, they're all going to be unramified here. Yeah? So this is the point infinity. There's a point zero which is ramified, but but these these guys where the points are, they're never there. So so here they come. There's always m components upstairs here, which m copies of the same thing. So so it means that the m action here it just permutes all these m, this this m components here. They come in clusters of m. And here we have the same number of points as downstairs. So I now start. Okay, this is a tree. I I I, I claim it should work. So 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 how well we we start by doing the differential forms here on these components here. So here, how should they look like? So here, in the, these these guys, they should be the the uh, simple poles, yeah, of the of the log. Here we should have log logarithmic differential forms because we should have simple poles here, and of course, then it must be a, dif a logarithmic differential form because these exact differential forms they never have simple poles. So here we should have but, and here, for, so 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 on this. So on these tails, there we can use the lemma. If you, if you look, the h plus one here is p, h plus one here is alpha plus one. It's just chosen in such a way that we really can apply this lemma. Okay, since since and then we just have to do it in such a way that this m action. Choose it here, then it's determined on all the, the, the conditions. So, so, so this part we can do now by the lemma. Yeah. So this was this explicit, the, the explicit guy that we just wrote written down. That, that works. Okay, so that that is usually uh, the, the complicated part, and we have already done it. But now, so once we have. have chosen these omegas on the tails of so, so, so there were the, the point specialized here upstairs then this omega is essentially determined up to a constant namely what should it be by these compatibility conditions now I first write it and then I first need to, I also need to, I see I also need to include it in the notation. So, so, because here we have this compatibility condition, and since I have here now p points specialized into this component, it means this, that the differential form which I have on this component, you can see it, 
should have a, 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 a pole of order p here. And here also p and p, and here minus l prime plus one. Okay. So, so okay, we can just normalize this point to be one, for example, and this point to be z1 up to z beta. Okay. And, and then this is just what it says, that this differential form should have a pole of order alpha in all the points above uh, f1 and a pole of order p above all the points above zi. That's just what it says. Yeah. And of course, I could just still multiply by, and it should have a single zero. The single zero should be here. So this is, this is the way the tree works out. And so it can multiply by a constant, but it's the only thing I can do. And so now I have to show that this is exact. So, so here I don't have, basically, well, okay, I need to choose my points a little bit, but that's not much I can do. Either it's exact or it's not exact. And it turns out that, it's, that, that this is okay. And here we use the choice of alpha. last few minutes we can we can maybe compute this a little bit so so you see here we have a piece power this is a piece power so we have to show this exact we have to show so we have to show there is some function u such that this is of the form du okay well this piece power since the derivative of the piece power is just zero we it's it's okay we can move that into the the u as well so 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 really we have to show That this differential form is exact. Yeah. And okay, so now um, you how 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 you do it is well you look at the space. So so we now we look at the partial fraction decomposition. Yeah. So we have here this the the m sphere of unity here, and so we get some partial fraction decomposition. So it's so important to know what the yeah, that's, that's, that's missing. You know what the partial fraction decomposition looks like. So so that's how it looks like. And now what 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 the point is, what you what you compute, you show yeah, that this differential form doesn't have all So here you really need the, the choice of the alpha. You just saw, okay, the residues are zero. So, 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 okay, sorry, this is not, this is really, this is really one part of the partial fraction decomposition here of this, of this one over this term here. And you, uh, you, you show that it doesn't have any residues here, so that this term is zero, the one with, with the simple form. And now you see, okay, but then this alpha, it was less than p, and so we, uh, it was at most p, and, and so, but this we can just integrate. Yeah? It's really, it's, it's fine. We can integrate it in characteristic P because, because the only, the only, since this, this power is between one and P, the only one that we couldn't integrate was the, was the residue. And now you can really do this explicitly the way there's just not enough points there for the residue to be non-zero so that it works out well. This is an elementary calculus computation approach. It's of course uh, hard to follow in such a talk, but it's in principle elementary. Uh, elementary calculus with a few more production maybe that you need. So, okay, a exactly what we, for, for those who notice, what we did is just a, a computation with the Cartier operator. So, okay, so let, let me um, summarize. Maybe I put it like this, it's better. Let me summarize how far we are with our problem. Um, in this case, we have constructed now, uh, we, I, 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 I told at the end of the last uh, talk that today we were going to prove or, or formulate a, a more careful uh, version of this Bertin obstruction. The Bertin obstruction that we discussed yesterday I just told you, okay, here we can choose the right amount of points with the right action of, of my group so that the, if I lift it to characteristic zero, 
uh, well, at least it fits with the genus of every cover which is involved in some sense. Yeah? So this is just basically what I did here. Here I have the points with the right action of the Z-mod uh, of the group, the wave should work out. So this is the Spatin obstruction. But now, today we have done a bit more. We have done like, um, we also told you at least the first, appro uh, some approximation of the, the p-adic distances between these points. Yeah? It tells you, okay, this, this tells you a little bit on how the, if you lift them to curve six zero, how are they in the p-adic disk? Where, where do the points lie, the ramification points lie? And, and so and the idea is, in this case, we have uh, a Galois group which is strictly divisible by p. Now, this is the, the only information that we need. This suffices to, to lift the thing to curve six zero. That's what we did here. 